Hey and welcome to another Retro Cause Game and Pickups. Yes, it's that time again where we take a look at all the games that I've managed to pick up for pretty good prices over the last couple of weeks. And it's also that time where you guys get to show me your game and pickups at the end of the show. Talking of which, if you guys want to show me your game and pickup pictures, then why not send them over to me by email at the little email address down here at the bottom of the screen. Okay. So anyway, let's jump straight into all the game and pickups that I've managed to pick up over the last couple of weeks. There's a lot of pickups in there, isn't there? Okay, so first up, we have this little thing. Now, actually, I ordered this months ago, and I don't need it anymore because it was for this EverDrive pro project over here, which is now completed. But this is, you can see here, this is a Sega uh, Mass System, Western Mass System, to a Japanese Sega Mass System converter. And uh, basically what happens is you put this in a Japanese Sega Master System, put your Western Master System games on the top, and then play on a Japanese Sega Master System. Um, but this took forever to come, so I just bought one locally here in Japan. This one actually came in China. And it took two and a half months. Can you believe it? Two and a half months. I can get a parcel from here to the UK in five days. Chinese post. Unbelievable. Anyway, so it's that. And also from China, we got this. Uh, a few people have mentioned uh, that I pick one of these up for the uh, Chinese knockoff series I do. This is the uh, Telex Yuli? <laughs> I don't know. I'm just going to call it the ukulele. Um, but this is an Android based uh, console. And apparently, it's not that bad. Or it's meant to be not that bad. You will see this on an upcoming video next week. Hopefully, it's good. Okay, so what games have I been picking up? Well, on the Xbox One I got a new game. This is Psycho Break 2. As you can see up here, it's a pretty good horror game. Now, in the West, this is known as The Evil Within, or The Evil Within 2 in this game's case. And um, I'm not sure why it's called Psycho Break 2 in Japan. It doesn't really make much sense, really. But anyway, this is one of those uh, survival horror games, and this is definitely a good one. If you haven't played it, you really should. Now, uh, Digital Foundry said that the Xbox One version has uh, a lot of frame issues. And I'm not joking, I played this on the Xbox One, completed it, I'm now doing the uh, New Game Plus mode. And um, I really, really didn't um, notice any of the frame drops. I mean, I'm sure they're there, but um, you know, when you're playing the game, you don't notice these things. And uh, yeah, I mean. All the talk these days about a game dropping one or two frames, it's just a lot of bollocks. I mean, games always did that in the past anyway, and nobody ever complains. It just seems to be the new, uh, the new uh, thing to jump on, isn't it? You know, and uh, you got something to complain about. But yeah, if you've got an Xbox One, definitely buy this. If you've got a PlayStation 4 or PlayStation 4 Pro, then even better, buy it on that. If you've got an Xbox One X, I believe that would be the ultimate version. So uh, play on that. Anyway. Cycle Break 2 or oh, Deeper Within 2, worth getting. Okay. And I've also picked up quite a few Dreamcast games over the last couple of weeks. First one is this. This is a Super Magnetic Neo, as it's called in the West. In Japan, it's got a pretty weird name. It's a Super Magnetic uh, New New New. Okay. And what I really like about this Japanese version is that the cover is actually embossed. So, whoops, I nearly dropped it there. So, all these are. Um, little circles here on the manual here. Let me get a bit closer. So these little circles on the manual here are all actually raised and really glossy. So that's quite a nice little finish to put onto the book. The game itself, well, it's okay. It's a decent platformer, but the controls are a little bit fiddly, I think. But considering this only cost me 300 yen, I'm not complaining. Next up, we got the original Space Channel 5. And I really love the cover on this, it's so sparkly, can you see that? And even on the inside it's sparkly as well, I have a spine card sparkly, really nice. So yes, this is the original Space Channel 5, don't need to say much about that, as I'm sure you all know what it's about. Okay, then we got a pretty good one, this one was actually a little bit expensive, this was a uh, 2000 yen. This is uh, Mark the Wolves, a Neo Geo conversion. Unfortunately, no spine card either for 2,000 yen, but um, this game is really shooting up in price these days. 
So uh, if you do want it, I suggest you pick it up while you can. Um, maybe I'll just make a spine card. And then one of my favorites, um, this was actually the reason why I, I overclocked uh, a Dreamcast in the past. This is Stoko, I can't say now, Stoko Battle 2. Um, I think it's called Tokyo Highway Battle 2 or Tokyo Extreme Racing or something like that in the West. This is basically a street racing game, one of the better ones on the Dreamcast. Really nice car models, good action, and yeah, just a good game all around. Definitely worth picking up. But the problem is, it does slow down a little bit, so maybe yeah, running it on an overclock Dreamcast would be better. And finally, on the Sega Dreamcast, we have the Capcom vs SNK Millennium Fight. Oh no, Millennium Fight. Yeah, Millennium Fight 2000. Okay, and this is again an arcade conversion and it's absolutely perfect compared to the arcade, no difference at all. Now as you can see, the manual does not fit in the case because this game came in one of those slightly fatter um, CD cases and it was all cracked so I didn't want to keep it like that. Unfortunately I don't have a replacement case that, uh, you know, the, the thicker ones, so we've gone with a normal CD case. The downside is that the manual doesn't actually fit in, it just falls out. So uh, we'll have to uh, sort that out in the future. So they are the Dreamcast pickups. But besides Dreamcast games, I've also got a couple of uh, more uh, PlayStation 2 games, which all cost 200 yen each, so let's take a look at those. Just put these Dreamcast games on the floor and get the PlayStation 2 games, okay. So first up is Steam Boy, based on the anime of the same name. Now this is a 3D adventure platformer. It's not bad, the controls are a little bit unresponsive. Oh, I can see I'm not playing this one, the disc's not in the machine. It's down there. Um, yeah, I mean, it's not bad, but it's certainly nothing to get too excited about. Average 3D platformer puzzler at best. Now, I'm a big fan of the original Gun Griffin on the uh, Sega Saturn and Gun Griffin 2. So, I decided to pick up Gun Griffin Blaze. Now, I have not played this one yet, so I'm not sure how good it is compared to the original. Um, Gun Griffin 2 wasn't as good as the original, I thought. It, it seemed to lack a lot of the polish of the original. So, um, I'm hoping uh, Game Arts came back in uh, style with this. Uh, updated version of the Gun Griffin franchise. On the back of the box, it does look pretty good, I must say. So uh, I'm, pretty, I'm looking forward to playing this one. A nice lovely manual as well. Okay, next up is Ratchet and Clank 4. Now I've not played Ratchet and Clank 3 or 2, come to mention it. Well, I've played 2 and not 1. I can't remember. I'll play one of them anyway. But uh, yeah, this one was only 200 yen, uh, reason being no manual. But yeah, I've uh, heard good things about this and as you can see up there in the corner, it is pretty good so uh, I'm looking forward to seeing that as well. Now here's a weird one. This is the Law of Ueki. Okay, now this is some sort of weird looking game from Bandai. I don't know if they programmed it, probably not. They don't seem to program anything to distribute stuff. But yeah, this is a, a weird looking game based on an anime I believe. So. Um, I've not had a chance to play this one, but I am looking forward to it. It kind of looks a bit kooky. Typical weird Japanese stuff. Then we have another game distributed by Bandai, but this is actually a, a game made by Capcom. This is Gundam Seed vs. ZAFT, or ZAFT, whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah, so if you play the, the Gundam uh, Capcom game on the Sega Dreamcast or the arcades, then this is basically a follow-up to them. This is a very good action uh, mech game. Definitely worth playing. Don't let the Bandai logo put you off. This is not a Bandai game. This is made by Capcom and one of the better uh, 3D mech fighting games. Well worth playing. Very good. And also it features a lot of the music from the uh, anime series and all the original voice acting as well. So that's another bonus if you're into Gundam that is. Next we got a 2D fighter from Taito. This is a... Uh, what the hell is this called? Ooh. I'll just read the Japanese. <laughs> it's easy to read that English. Okay, this is a... Eremen... Eremen... Eremental? Maybe it's meant to be Elemental. Yeah, I think it's meant to be Elemental, but it says Eremental... Grad... Grad? 
Elemental Grad, okay. Um, yeah, maybe it's maybe Elemental Glad, who knows. But anyway, this is um, a, t a 3D uh, one on one fighter from Taito. Uh, it's kind of obscure, not many people know about this one. Um, the manual is kind of fine as well. But believe it or not, it is actually pretty good. Um, so if you can find it on the cheap, I would recommend picking it up. Lots of game modes in there, including the typical story modes, which a lot of these anime based games have. Um, but you can skip all that and go straight to the arcade mode where it's just a proper 3D one-on-one -on -one fighter. So uh, yeah, check it out. Pretty worth uh, uh, worth picking up. Pretty good. Okay, next we got a stinker. This is uh, Project Minerva. Yeah. I can't I can't get these titles these days. What the hell's that? Minerva. Uh, yeah. Okay. This is uh, released by a D3 Publishing, a budget uh, game publisher. Probably best known for their uh, EDF games, which they released. They didn't make them, but they released them. Um, yeah, this is some sort of weird uh, map, not map, uh, action army based game, where your character seems to uh, travel around different time periods or something. It's kind of weird to explain. Um, the game itself is pretty awful, but uh, the cutscenes are pretty good. I do like the cutscenes, they're well made, but the game itself. Yeah, load of crap, as you can see there. Maybe not worth picking up. Uh, this one was actually a hundred yen, so yeah. Maybe I wasted a waste of a hundred yen. Yeah, even the CD and manual look pretty sad. Yeah. Okay, now the PlayStation 2 have loads of uh, music games. And one such music game is this. This is Unison. And basically, uh, this is a dance tutorial game. Where you use the analog sticks on the controller to uh, move uh, your arms and legs or whatever. And it does use covers of uh, popular uh, Japanese pop songs, which were uh, in the charts at the time. Um, it's not bad actually, but remembering the entire dance routine when you have to perform it is kind of tough. Um, but you know, if you're into memorization and stuff like that, it's well worth picking up. Um, one thing I do like is the manual. It's printed on this like card type stock paper and it's really thick. It gives it a nice uh, sense of quality and um, that layout inside is uh, typical uh, of the time, especially here in Japan. Uh, nice and colorful, minimalistic um, design with circles and stuff like that. But yeah, as you can see from the pictures in the manual, it is really, really colorful and um, got some boxes of the character models there. I don't know if that was a thing. I don't know if you could really buy those shops. I can't say I remember seeing them, but uh, that doesn't mean they weren't real. Yeah. But anyway, that's a pretty good one. And finally, we have City Crisis. Um, this is by uh, Renderware, I believe. No, no, Renderware is the software it uses. Who the hell makes this? I can't remember. Maybe it was. I can't remember who developed this now. Um, but yeah, I think it's released by Syscom anyway. And then uh, Basically, what this game is, is a, a rescue operation type simulator. Well, maybe not simulator. But uh, you fly around, you helicopter pick up people build, burning buildings and other stuff like that. Yeah. Interesting, nice diversion. Um, I certainly wouldn't say it was a AAA title, but uh, if you have to something a little bit different and unusual, you can't really go wrong with City Crisis. So that's pretty much everything I picked up over the last couple of weeks. But what about you guys? Well, judging from the pictures you've sent, you've been buying some good stuff as well. So let's take a look at your game and pickups.